Thank the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is worthy of all praise. He is worthy. We cannot forget that. We cannot forget that. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We're just hours away from the most pivotal day of all Christendom. There never was a day before nor until the rapture of the church will there ever be a day that can match or come close to Pentecost. Pentecost is the most important day the world has ever known. That's why we look forward to it. There's no other day that can match Pentecost. I want you to think about that. No other day can come close to it. It's the greatest day in Christendom. In uh, Acts chapter 2, begin there in verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, everybody say it's here. It's, here. it's not going to come, it's here. It's here. The day of Pentecost has fully come. So there's no excuse for waiting on God to do anything. To do that is blasphemy. Hallelujah. It's fully come. It's here. There's nothing you can ask of God that he has not already given. The problem is not God giving it, it's you taking it. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly... There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. It's fully come, and it sat down. As the Father sits, as Jesus sits at his right hand, Pentecost sat down. I want you to let that... A lot of people don't get this. A lot of people don't know what Pentecost is. Hallelujah. We could come up with a, a song. When the Holy Ghost sat down. Hallelujah. For as the Father and the Son rules from the throne, so does the Holy Ghost. Wow. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled 
outfitted with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? It's interesting here on this day. Galileans. The people who were known as Galileans were the most uneducated, the ignorant of the Jew. They were looked down upon. And this was what fascinated the people when they saw these who had not reached the status of society, how they could do what they did. How they could speak in every language that the Jews had ever been. They can speak in all. How can they do that? These people are ignorant. These people are from Galilee. They don't have the sophistication of the universities of Jerusalem. They don't have the sophisticate, sophistication of the rabbis and the Pharisaical order, the Sadducees. They don't have a degree as the scribes have. How can they do this? See? We have to see this picture. We have to see it. See? Pentecost is known as the 50th day from Passover. Now that's important. Write that down. It's the 50th day. It's very important. We're going to look at something here. You're going to see it. Because all I want to do tonight is sort of lay out the picture of what tomorrow is all about. The 50th day. Now when we study the book of Acts, Our study reveals, write this down, that Pentecost is the life transition for believers. It is a life transition for believers. For three and a half years, the twelve plus others accompanied Jesus, but they were never with him. They ate with him. They traveled with him. He was in their homes. They rode in the boat together. But they never were with him. They were not with him. And when Jesus was crucified, when he was arrested and crucified, we find out why they were not with him. It said they all fled. If they had been with him, they could not have fled. Because that which was in them that caused them to flee was the very thing that kept them from ever being with Jesus. Oh, they were seen with him. People said, look at that. There goes his group. There goes his disciples. 
They hang out together. But they never were with him. For if they had been with him, they could not flee. Once you are with Jesus, you can't walk away from him. Once you're with Jesus, when the storm comes, there's no place to hide. When it looks like all is lost, if you're with Jesus, you hang on. It's a, it's a life transition for believers. It, it is a growth hormone for the body of Christ. A growth hormone. For the body of Christ. It is the economy of the church. It is heaven's inner aid to defeat the enemy or the kingdom of the devil. Heaven's inner aid to defeat. Now, what does that mean? If you study history... When there was an attempt to overthrow the Spanish government, it looked as though they were coming against the government and coming against Spain on all four sides. But that's not what defeated them. That was an inner group known as the fifth column. The fifth column. The 50th day. Pentecost is the fifth column. It is the inner aid to defeat the kingdom of Satan. The inner aid. The fifth column. Pentecost is the hinge on which the door swings. The hinge on which the door swings. John 10, Jesus identifies himself as the door. In Revelation chapter 3, chapter three he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open, I will come in and sup with him. Pentecost is the hinge on the door and which the door swings. Jesus, the word, knocks. And the door is open because of the hinge. And when the door is open, the word comes in and the word is eaten. Consumed. I want you to think about that for a minute. Pentecost is the hinge on which the door swings. The word comes and knocks on the door of your heart. And it is Pentecost, which is the hinge, and which opens that door on which the door can open... And the word will come in and you will consume the word. Do you understand that when you are a recipient of Pentecost, 
that when the word comes in and you consume that word, it is the equivalent of every Jewish feast day. When you consume the word, as Jesus talked about in the book of John, if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, I want you to think about that. When Pentecost becomes a reality to you, everything that enters you is the equivalent of all the Jewish feast days. Because at every feast day, there was a blessing. If you'll study the feast days, every blessing that was required for man to please God was given to the Jews in those feast days. And when you celebrate within yourself Pentecost. Everything the feast days gave is yours. It's in you. It's the equivalent of. Now do you understand why that you and I don't have to offer sacrifice? For it's been made. Pentecost does something that is so important. As I said, it was a life transition, but it changes the prophetic. which is the proclamation to the apostolic proliferation. I hope you're writing this down because something big is happening. God is moving this church from the proclamation to the proliferation of truth. To now we have proclaimed, but come tomorrow, we're moving into a new dynamic and it will be proliferation. Not proclamation. The proclamation has been made. Now we are to take that proclamation and take it to the world. And what we have received in the proclamation we must take it to the world. It cannot be kept within the walls of our upper room. But it must be taken to the world. Are you getting this? Can you understand what's happening? There's going to be an exciting dynamic change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 
God is using ALM because we've always been a flagship. When I came here in 1980, people were used to religion as usual. And we began to preach the message. And people came from everywhere. They had never heard it before. We were on radio, we were on television. We were, they were, I had reporters coming to write articles. We had billboards. We were the first church, as far as I know, who did advertisement on television. And my favorite spot was Saturday night back then when people were watching Saturday night wrestling. <laughs> That's when our commercials would come on. Because that was the people I wanted. No other church seemed to want them. But I said, hey, let's go after him. See? Hallelujah. I want you to listen. Take notes as fast as you can. My wife and I were talking. <clears throat> a lot of times when people are taking notes, they don't listen. They don't hear. You know? When the disciples, <clears throat> when they saw what took place in that garden, when Judas came, and they saw Jesus taken away, and they saw Jesus as he was whipped and bruised and beaten, Crucified on a cross. And they heard the response of many. Well, he was a good man. Little extreme. But he's gone the way of the prophets before him. He's gone the way of the zealots before him. I wonder what his disciples will do. But what the world did not understand was Pentecost was coming. For with Pentecost, things would change forever. When you experience Pentecost, I wrote these things down years ago, as a matter of fact. Probably 15 years ago. When I experienced Pentecost that we've talked about tonight, I can declare with faith, I'm not the last of a dying thing, but the first of that which is to come. I'm now able to make footprints in the sands of time and the shores of life for others to see and follow. I now have the ability to speak with tongues and navigate my life through unbelief, reaching the landmarks of truth, thus giving me a foundation to stand upon and proclaim those truths to a lost and dying world, giving hope, life, healing, prosperity, and salvation. Tomorrow says that we will never be the same. We'll never be the same. We'll never be.
Tamara says, we will never be the same. Never. Pentecost, listen to me. Pentecost occurs through obedience. Not who you are, what you are, why you are. Not what you do, not what you don't do. Pentecost comes through obedience. If you'll just obey, Pentecost will be a reality to you. That's all it takes. Just be obedient. You don't have to do anything. For years, I, you have to understand, being in Pentecost all my life, my, you've heard the story many times, but as I was being birthed by my mother, my mother was speaking in other tongues, and the doctor turned and said, what language is she speaking? So the first words I ever heard were my mother speaking in tongues. So I guess you could call me a Pentecostal, I'm not sure. And I've watched people over the years try to drum up Pentecost. They've tried to sing it down. They've tried to shout it down. They've tried to scream it down. It reminds me of the prophets of Baal. They did all that and it still didn't happen. The fire didn't come. So this is something you need to understand. The fire doesn't come because you're screaming and hollering and cutting yourself. And Pentecost comes to those who are obedient. And the only reason why people do not experience Acts 2 Pentecost with the evidence of speaking in tongues is they're not obedient. There's no other reason why. Anybody who is obedient to God can be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Everybody got that? And, and we have these people said, just do this and do that. And we, we know the story how we used to have altar calls and people would come down and my Lord, we've done it all. We've sought, we've tarried, we've, we've done a little bit of everything. Then to get you down at the altar and one will say, hold on, the other will say, turn loose. And another will pat you on the back, another will grab you, 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 your face, and you know, and all kinds of stuff like that. And another one, back when I came here in the 1980s, it was a full gospel ministry. They had a thing going, they'd carry you in a room and, and say, all right, I'm going to teach you about tongues, and here's what you do. Well, what do I say? You said, see my tie, see my tie, see my tie. And they'd always wear their tie, and they said, see my tie. Oh, you got it, you know, and they started them that way. They did everything they could to get people to experience Pentecost. It was crazy when I came here in the 80s. This is crazy stuff. And they were claiming to be full gospel people. But I've been in it all my life. I said, wait a minute. I said, Everybody don't have to wear a tire. It gets full of the Holy Ghost. It's all about obedience. It's all about obedience. That's all it is. Just... All it takes is obedience. To be filled with the Holy Spirit, the evidence to speak in other tongues, it's all about obedience. Just be obedient to it. Pentecost has already come. It's not a matter of going to come. I remember years ago, I, I told the story of my granddad, I'll never forget it, I was a kid. And his neighbor, uh, they were out there talking one day, and, and uh, his neighbor uh, was a, 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 a Presbyterian. And he was talking to my grandfather, and he said to my grandfather, he said, you know, 
I don't understand about this, you Pentecostals, I don't understand about this talking in tongues. And my grandfather, of course, you know, it's real. He said, well, let's put it this way. If God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. My grandfather looked at him and said, sir, you'll never get it. You know why? Because it's already here. It's not a matter of if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. He, it's already here. He's already given it. He's already given it. The problem is you're not obedient to Jesus Christ. You're not obedient to the word. All you have to do is just obey it. Do it. And you can say what you want to, you're lying. Because the only thing you the only thing keeping you from not speaking in tongues is you're not obedient. A lot of people they're not obedient because they're ignorant to it. They've been taught wild doctrine. All kind of weird doctrine. Or they've seen people that claim they were full of the Holy Spirit acting weird. So they want to make sure that they get it right. <laughs> Hallelujah. All you got to do is be obedient. Just be obedient. What did the word say? The word said, it's here. It's here. So I'm going to be obedient to that. Right now, Pentecost is in this room. Right now, everything given by God for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit is in this room right now. Everybody in this room can right now be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. The only thing going to keep you from doing it is not being obedient. Every one of you can right now. Used to grow up at the Pentecostal church. When I say Pentecostal, I'm talking about we believe in one God manifested in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I'm not talking about, you know, our precious brethren. But we were taught, well, if you want the Holy Ghost, this is what you got to do. You get saved, and then you get sanctified, and then you tarry, And then just hope it'll happen to you. We had people in Pentecostal church never were filled with the Holy Spirit because they couldn't meet the criteria of the church's doctrine. <laughs> I remember, we were looking at it the other day, my wife and I, When we first, back in the 80s, we first going, we were in 70, 40. And there was a couple who, I don't know, they heard about us somehow, and they just showed up that morning. The man was an alcoholic. He was such an alcoholic, his hand shook just like that. He couldn't hold anything. He shook. His wife was a proud religious person, but she was as heathen as he was. I'll never forget that Sunday morning. I gave an altar call. They had never been there. They had never heard the message, and they came forward. 
And here stands, I can, I'm sit, standing right here and I can still see him. He comes to the altar and he's standing there. Can't hold a cup, can't. Pow! He was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and within seconds, the man was full of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. It's like it fast. Why? Because when he heard the message, he obeyed it. And when he obeyed it, he didn't have to go through training. He didn't have to read three books on it. He didn't know anything about it. All he knows is a strange preacher gave an altar call. He didn't even know what he was coming for, other he needed help. I don't know what your condition is tonight. I don't know what your condition is. Are we on? Are they watching us? Wherever you are around the world. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your condition is. You just might have a religious devil. I didn't say you were demon possessed. You've got a religious devil that's hanging over you. Just don't want you to get this. But no matter what your condition is tonight, if you'll just be obedient. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's all you need. All you have to do is be, be obedient to that, and bam! The Holy Spirit will begin to... Pentecost will rise up on the inside of you, and you will begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives up. Just that simple. Just be obedient. Don't put the blame on God. Like the Presbyterian man, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. How many of you know God is a God that is always in the now? So God does not function on time. We try to blame time on God. No, time is ours. God doesn't have a timing. It's all about our timing. See, God doesn't have a time. God's always in the now. When you say, well, when it's time, no, you control the time. And if you decide you're going to be obedient to be filled with the Holy Ghost, then your time has come. Amen. It's not God. God's not in control of time. He has nothing to do with time. He gave it to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to stand to your feet tonight. I, I, I know that this is a little different. But we need you filled with the Holy Ghost. We need you filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I could have gone into a lot of stuff. I could have gone into the right, right down here at Pentecost. I could have gone into the Apostle Paul's ministry. Remember it's the hinge on the door and Paul prayed and he asked the disciples more than once Pray that a door might be open unto me. And he talks about the door that he might preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And, and we could go into all that, but that all has to do with proliferation of what has been proclaimed. We, we, we already know that. So we don't have to go there. The thing I want you to see tonight is it's present. It's in this room. Pentecost is in this room right now. And if you'll just be obedient to it, you can begin to praise God in a heavenly language right now. There's none of this junk about, none, none of all this junk about, you know, someday, sometime. No, no, no. No, that, that, that's, that's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. You have just said the Holy Ghost hadn't done its job. Don't be guilty of that because Jesus warned us. He said that when you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you're going to give an account for it. And see, a lot of people don't understand that. They think blaspheme of the Holy Ghost, they think it's something crazy, and then you're definitely going straight to hell. 
No, no. He just said, you're going to be judged for it. When you stand before God, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. The word blaspheme means to speak against. When you speak against the Holy Ghost, remember, the Bible said, you're not going to be judged by how good you look or how white your robe is. For yourself. He said you're going to be judged by your words. So when you stand before God, your words are going to come up. That's what Jesus was talking about there. When you blaspheme, speak against the Holy Ghost. When you stand before God, all those words that you spoke against the Holy Ghost are going to come up to you and you'll be judged. What does it mean to be judged by that? It means, what are you going to get in heaven? What benefits are in heaven for you? Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to hell. Hallelujah. Don't be guilty of that. I want everything heaven's got for me. So therefore, I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost right now.